Hi guys, Jordan here. Um, so in 2019, I moved from Sydney to Canberra. Uh, and when I moved, I found that there wasn't a lot of stuff on kind of moving to Canberra and what Canberra's like, etc. Um, so I thought I'd do a little video explaining some of the things, um, some of the big things, and also probably some of the small things that really aren't that relevant. But anyways, here we are. I'm gonna be talking about driving, cost of living, work, things to do, and things that are bad, as well as some other things, but we'll get to them when we get to them. Firstly, Canberrans are terrible drivers. Uh, it needs to be said, I know Sydney drivers are bad, but at least they're predictably bad. Canberra drivers are like this spicy lucky dip of just terrible drivers. As soon as there's some remotely inclement weather, it's like, oh, it's a bit foggy. Boom, eight car pile up on the Tuggeranong Parkway with traffic standstill both ways because some dickhead on the other side of the road wants to have a peek even though there's a median strip. It's just the worst. Um, it very rarely rains, so inclement weather isn't even inclement weather it's literally like a bit foggy that's it I don't know how to explain it I still have strong feelings about the drivers in Canberra obviously so we'll move along um, actually no we won't speaking of driving you'll need a car in Canberra even though everything's like 15 minutes away from each other from itself uh, it's like the distance is quite far um, so like you will find yourself driving like 10 sometimes 15 kilometers um, to get somewhere so it is worth having a car even though there's no traffic um, yeah secondly everything closes at 2 p.m. on a Sunday which is like ridiculous and by everything I don't mean everything I just mean cafes but that's really everything uh, when you think about it on the weekend, they also only open at 8.30 a.m. So, like, I'm not an early person. I love a sleep in. But if you want to get up early and do something, go for a cycle or a drive or whatever, and you want a coffee before you go, then no, you cannot have one unless it's from Macca's. All right, let's talk about beer. The beer is fantastic in Canberra. It's just really good. Um, there is a lot of it. It's a little bit expensive, but there's just a lot of these really nice little breweries and pubs and the beer is just fantastic. It's really, really, really damn good. Uh, I'll talk about cost of living and I'll talk about it real estate wise and non real estate wise. And I'll first start non real estate wise because it's the easiest cost of living about the same as Sydney or Melbourne. Like it's, you know, you can get a bacon and egg roll between 10 to $12, bacon and egg roll combo, like 12 to $13 kind of thing. You can pay 18 bucks for a bacon and egg roll, but don't do that to yourself because that's a bad idea. Yes, I'm aware that I've just measured cost of living in terms of bacon and egg rolls, and I think that's a fair measurement. Uh, the cost of living real estate wise in Canberra is quite expensive. There are more renters than homeowners in Canberra and as a result the rental market is quite competitive so you really have to get in fast um, with any applications. Um, you can expect to pay between $250 to $320 per person for a place in a nice spot. Um, that's if you're sharing with someone. Um, you, if you're sharing with quite a few people you can go down to $200 kind of thing. Um, like if you're living in a crack den kind of thing. Um, for your own place, you'll be lucky if you get a place for around $450 uh, a week, that is, by the way. Um, houses themselves and apartments don't seem to be that expensive, um, but I'm from Sydney, so anything that's not like less than $2 million for a shoebox on the side of the road is cheap. So that's depressing to say that. Work-wise, I moved to Canberra for work. Work pays quite well, which is nice. Um, it's also quite easy to meet people. 
Um, there's young professionals and there's old professionals. Um, yeah, there's also quite a few universities. So if you're into drunken shenanigans, um, like in the city and the surrounds, there's definitely some of that going on. If you're not into drunken shenanigans, there's lots of boring stuff for you to do as well, like hiking and going to the Arboretum. And it's not actually that boring. It's actually quite fun. Um, yeah, there's things to do. Trust me. Uh, things that suck in Canberra, there is no beach. Uh, and if you talk to a Canberran about it, they'll be like, oh, there's Batemans Bay, but that's two hours away. Um, and sometimes they'll be like, oh, there's Canbar Pools, which is like these shitty little rock pools in the middle of nowhere. So no thank you. Um, no thank you. Uh, in summer, it's very hot as well. Uh, and as per my previous email, no beach. So that's not a good combo. Um, another bad thing is that sometimes you can tell if someone's from Canberra and that's definitely not always a good thing. Um, everything closes early, which I've already said, but I'd like to say again, uh, the rent is very expensive. Um, and lots of people are quite elitist. Um, so often you'll get the like, which department do you work at? And that's just so that people can like measure themselves up against you. And it's just a lovely. But all of that said, Canberra isn't that bad and I very much enjoyed my time living there and I would definitely do it again. Um, the coffee and the beer, fantastic. And the beer, also very good. One more time, the beer, quite good. Um, let me know if you have any questions about moving to Canberra. Um, I'm now in Melbourne uh, and everything is closed down. So I will not be doing a video about moving to Melbourne because I don't know what it's like. I might do another one where everything is open, when everything is open. Anyways, thanks for listening.